Hello Steelers and welcome to this short video in which I'm going to show you how I scratch built these 15mm sheds. Now you could use these for any size, I've done them in 15mm but you just change the measurements to make them bigger or smaller depending on what you want to use them for. So 28mm maybe double the size or even 20mm just add a few more millimetres here and there. They can be used for pretty much anything from uh, the medieval period all the way up to modern times really. They're just little lean-to sheds, uh, outdoor toilets and it's just some nice little scattered terrain that you can throw about on your table. And as I say, I've scratch built these using the minimal amount of materials, uh, just some scraps I had laying around and I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. First of all, I grabbed some offcuts of plastic card that I had. This is styrene uh, sheets. It's about two millimeters wide. I think that's probably big enough for these. Uh, this is just to make up the actual box of the sheds themselves. And I measured it out using a pencil and a ruler, as you can see here, just to make sure that I can get all the measurements before I started cutting. You know what they say, measure twice, cut once. And I also measured out as well where the door was going to go as well, just to make sure that was ready to be cut out as well. You don't have to cut the door out as part of this, but I just wanted to make it separate and it just makes things a little bit easier. At this stage, I also wanted the roof just to be slightly lent back towards the back of the structure itself. This was for the outside toilet. So I just measured off a small area at the back wall of the building and also on the sides as well, just so again, so I've got a nice line to cut to. And then using an incredibly sharp knife, uh, be careful with this, obviously, measure twice, cut once, uh, I just basically started to cut the plastic out. Uh, the good thing about styrene is you only need to do a couple of lines across it, and then you can pretty much snap it straight off, as you can see there. So I just cut out all the different parts of the shed, and I had all my elements ready to stick together. Once everything was cut out, it was just a case of super gluing things together. You could use polystyrene cement for this, but it takes a little longer to dry and super glue if you just want to do these fast. These took about two hours in total, so basically a night's work really. Uh, and super glue helped that simply because it dries a lot quicker, especially if you use CA Accelerator. I'll put links for this stuff in the description below. Uh, and that just really speeds up that whole drying process for the super glue. So basically just sticking the walls to the front and also the back wall onto the sides as well, just to make up a basic box. You don't have to be too neat with this because A, you can trim off a lot of the styrene anyway afterwards once it's all dry, but also you want this to have a little bit of a rustic feel to it really. It doesn't want to look as though it's too perfect and too machine made. Once I built the basic structure, I built the roof as well, so I just measured this against the size of it just to get it exact here. I also probably had to trim off a little bit here and there just to make sure it fitted perfectly on top of the base, but this was quite an easy little task to do. Uh, I made sure that I'd actually got the, the thing built before I actually got, fitted the roof onto it, so I made sure, as I say, it fitted perfectly. And then with the roof on, there we have it. A uh, basic box for uh, the shed itself. I just trimmed off some of the styrene that was overhanging on bits and pieces, but uh, I was happy with this as it was. This is our basic building block. Our next requirement was these bamboo coffee stirrers. Now you can get these in any of your local coffee shops, uh, fast food restaurants, that kind of thing. But I actually bought these from eBay. They cost me about £2 for a um, hundred or so, I can't remember exactly. But what I need to do now is basically just make them look as though they've been cut by hand rather than by machine. And we do this with a very sharp scalpel by just going down the edge and just taking small chunks out of the edge of the coffee stirrers themselves. As you can see here, I'm just working my way up and down both edges of these and it just looks as though it's been hewn by a tool, a hand tool, rather than a machine cut as these stirrers have. And then also to add some grain, I'm using that same knife and just using the very edge uh, and the tip of the knife just to scrape in some wood grain all the way across because again these are quite smooth uh, items in real life. And this is all you have to do. Just prepare quite a few of these at once because you're going to be using quite a lot of them. Again, just going through exactly the same process. Take, take your time over this. Be careful, obviously, with your knife and cut away from yourself. Uh, but just make sure you've just got some chunks here and there missing from the edges of them. Uh, this will really bring out the detail later on in the build. 
and then it was time to start measuring up the actual planking for the shed itself so I just measured the size of the shed just to give me an idea and then just started with a pencil just marking off how far how long I wanted each of these individual planks uh, just a small mark here and there just to show this I think it was about 28 millimeters uh, you want a little bit of overhang if you can here because we can always cut that off later on which we will do but you want to entirely cover the side of the shed so this is what uh, I'm just measuring it ever so slightly longer than the actual size of the shed then using my knife I've just cut these into the little pieces that I'm going to be gluing onto the side of the shed and again using super glue here uh, I wouldn't use PVA glue which is good for wood but it's not very good for plastic because they will peel off super glue is probably your friend here really and then all I'm doing is literally lining the side of the shed as much as I can with these planks and as I say try to cover as much of the shed itself with these don't worry too much if you've got a little bit of overhang here uh, the reason I'm using super glue as I said is because it's very good for bonding both glue and plastic together but also it dries quick as well so it means that you can move through this and do these literally in an evening if you've got a couple on the go it might take you a little longer but uh, one at a time and you will have you know by the end of a week you probably have five or six of these things made easily the side and the rear of the shed is quite easy to make it's just planking however the front is slightly different I've got two planks there either side of the door frame itself but then I just wanted to put another little plank across the top so I just measured that gap and again drew it out took a knife and just cut out another smaller piece so even all the little off cuts and things that you're left over with from the uh, previous work you can still use these elsewhere here uh, the bamboo is quite difficult <laughs> to cut through as you can see uh, so be careful with that knife you don't want to be slipping or anything like that uh, just make sure it's perfectly it fits perfectly as well before you put it in trim off anything that you need to and then just glue that in place as well the roof was made in exactly the same way as the side walls literally with just planks but these ones slightly longer again I just wanted a slight overhang this also covers up the top of the planking of the walls as well uh, and just makes things look a little bit neater one final thing I did was just add a little bit of trim to the uh, top of the doorway just because it wasn't long enough and there was a gap uh, so you can fill in basically any gaps that you've got with smaller offcuts and things I also then went round the base and just snipped off the excess of the bamboo stirrers right up to the plastic you can see there so I'm using the plastic basically as a guide just to cut these off once these were cut off I then just sanded them down just to make sure they were flat uh, nice and easy and that's pretty much your shed is pretty much done the door was handled slightly differently instead of having the wider planks I actually cut some of these in half just down their long axis like this and they, they split pretty easily with a with a sharp knife so it's uh, quite an easy process but again just be careful because you're using a sharp knife in a very small area but I just sliced these to make some smaller planking and this is why I kept the door separate uh, from the shed itself just so I could work on some of this detail here exactly the same way as on the walls and the roof of the shed I glued those planks into place but then I also glued a couple of planks across the front of it as well just as little support planks as well which you see on doors and things you can do this in a variety of ways there's hundreds and thousands of different uh, ways of making door planking like this but uh, this is the way I wanted I just wanted to do it pretty quickly you could do them horizontal if you wanted to or vertical whichever way suits you and also you can make them different as well just by adding these things you can see there I'm just squirting a little bit of uh, CA accelerator onto it there just to speed up the process of the drying of the super glue and with the door built I then glued it in place uh, where it should be again you could have it open either open front or, um, or back but just make sure it's in place before you continue on to the next step and that is again as I said that's pretty much the shed complete itself next thing to do was to build a base for the shed and just making sure that I had uh, an offcut of plastic card that the shed would actually fit on I then just trimmed off the edges of it so this is just to give it a little bit of stability on the game board and also you can add a little bit of detail and things as well onto this as well it's just a nice little modeling project in itself with the plastic card cut to the right size and the edges smoothed off as well just to give it a slightly rounded feel uh, I then just super glued the actual shed itself 
to the base as well. Same again, super glue, uh, speeds everything up nice and quick, uh, an evening's work, and you've got yourself a brand new shed. How you paint it is entirely up to you, but this is my method for doing it. Firstly, I take Vallejo's German black and brown, camo black and brown, uh, and liberally paint this everywhere. Make sure you cover everything, uh, get into all the nooks and crannies of those planks as well. Uh, just make sure you get all the way around the shed itself. Just clear, get it with a, a reasonably big brush, you can do this quite quickly. Uh, make sure that you don't knock the doorway out of at this point as well. Uh, this is why super glue is good because it is a relatively strong bond in this case. Then next I turn to Vallejo's green grey and I dry brush this all over the shed against the grain of the wood itself. Dry brushing is a relatively easy process, just get a large brush, put it into your paint and then just wipe off quite a lot of it using a cloth or some kind of towel or something and then you literally just run the brush over the top of the uh, structure itself and you can see there that it starts to pick up all the highlights of the wood grain that you cut into it earlier on in this build. Then next was to do another dry brush but this time with Vallejo's khaki and this is again just over the top of that green grey and this just brings out some of the highlights. This is just a much lighter dry brush than before but again you can see it's still picking up some of the highlights that uh, are on top of the green grey. So you've now got three different colours if you wanted to at this point you could probably wash this in maybe something like Agrax Earthshade but I don't bother this looks like old wood to me and that's the effect that I was going for with this. Then using Vallejo's texture uh, paste or whatever basing materials you use I'll just go around the edge of the base of the shed itself again this is a quite a nice paste it's uh, has a bit of texture to it, it's already coloured so it's quite easy to use straight out of the pot. Uh, it does kind of gum your brushes up as you can see here but it does wash off as well in water so it's not too bad stuff. And I just go around all the edge of the base here just make sure that everything is covered, you've got no white showing through from the plastic yard. And once that paste is dry, uh, it only takes about 45 minutes or so really, but I'd leave it overnight to be honest. Uh, I'll just give it a quick wash with Agrax Earthshade, uh, one of the best washers on the market in my opinion. And this again just gives you a little bit of depth on that mud colour and just adds another dimension to it. And our last step for painting at least is just to dry brush the paste. Once the Agrax is also dry, this is just using Vallejo Khaki, just again, just to bring out another little layer of what looks like dried mud around the edge of your shed. And then we're into the absolute final stages. So using undiluted PVA glue, I will again just run around the edge of the base here where you can see it. I'll leave the front uh, empty because I'm going to be putting grass here. I want that bit to look as though it's been well trodden through so uh, there'll be it's like a path leading up to the uh, the toilet in this case or the shed and then just put it into some static grass. If you've got a static grass applicator you can use that. I don't bother though. Uh, blowing on it is enough for me to work and it also then just gives you a tiny bit of colour uh, on the actual structure itself against that grey of the wood. I also at this point as well add some vine leaves and things, anything that you've got, any kind of uh, scatter, this is just railway modelling uh, materials uh, so you can get this in most hobby shops. Again just using the PVA glue to slap onto the side of the structure itself where vines and leaves and things would grow up some little uh, uh, just some little plants here and there again just to add a bit of shape and difference and texture to the actual structure itself so you know just got this little wooden uh, little wooden box and then one final thing is just to add some grass tufts or you could add some flowers and things here as well i buy these off ebay they're ready made uh, i could make them myself but i don't have an applicator and i can't be bothered to be perfectly honest i buy them in bulk uh, they're dead cheap and the company that do sell them are very good and uh, send things out very quickly and there you have it your completed sheds. As I say, this one took me about two hours, not including drying times. But if you use a hair dryer, you can speed up a lot of the uh, drying times, such as the paste and the Agrax Earth Shade, that kind of thing. Uh, you could make a couple of these at a time in a night quite easily. If you spent maybe 
a couple of hours the night before just preparing the logs really and the planks you could make quite a lot of these quite simply you don't have to use the plastic card you could use anything that's a little box and just build these up against the side of a box so some styrene or whatever you have lying about uh, very easy to make very simple uh, and as i say as scatter terrain uh, if you want if you're looking for cheap alternatives to shop bought things then this is probably the way to go well thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have done and you're not subscribed please do subscribe uh, please do check out my patreon as well uh, every penny goes back into helping the channel run and keeping the lights on here so uh, any money that is spent there is much appreciated uh, also check me out on twitter uh, check out Storm of Steel on Facebook as well and on Instagram and now on Reddit. Uh, thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please give me a like and also drop me a comment and I shall see you in the next video.